Hey everyone, this is Dr. Candice Silvola from Rustic Ranch Remedies. In today's video, I have this huge ingredient haul to show you along with a couple of tools that I've purchased as well. Some of these are ingredients that I'm trying out from different suppliers. Some of them are new ingredients to me. And I'm gonna go over each ingredient with you and show you what I've purchased over the last couple months. I'm gonna start over on this end and just work my way over. Here I have a lot of the powdered products I've purchased and some herbs. Here I have Allentone powder. This is an ingredient that's really good for sensitive skin with redness and irritation. I purchased this from Formulator Sample Shop. A lot of the ingredients I have here are from this store. This is Organic Emulsifier Blend 60. This is a truly organic and natural emulsifier. It is a blend, I believe, of rice bran and a gum. I actually got into this and tried it out and it, it makes such an amazing serum-like consistency. So I'm really happy with this purchase. This one is new to me. Next is this pumpkin powder from Formulator Sample Shop. I'm looking forward to trying out this powder. And here's another emulsifier called Silagel. And this also makes really nice serum-like emulsions. This is Coenzyme Q10. I got this from Lotion Crafter. It is a very potent antioxidant. And here's Niacinamide B3. This is also from Lotion Crafters. This is a really amazing ingredient and is really effective in skincare. I have never used this before or the Coenzyme Q10. And here is L-Arginine powder. This is a pH modifier. So instead of using sodium bicarbonate to raise the pH to a more alkaline level, you can use this L-Arginine powder. So I haven't used this yet, and I'm looking forward to trying this out as far as a, a pH modifier. L-Arginine is a protein, so it also has skin benefits. And this is dendritic salt. What I've read about dendritic salt is, is that the salt has a larger surface area. So if you put this in a dry product, let's say like a bath soak, a salt bath salt, a dry clay mask, something of the sort, that it will help to absorb the water. So that way it's not creating clumping in, in the dry powder. But it is just salt. And then I have, also from Lotion Crafter, I have this um, Surf Pro SLSA. It's a surfactant, a dry powder surfactant. So I have not tried this one out and I wanted to try it out in a bath product. And then we have this big bag of coconut milk powder. I've used coconut milk powder in the past so I wanna see how this one works. And here we have some herbs from Mountain Rose Herbs. These are herbs that I like to use for glycerites, macerates, and other infusions. This one is Meadowsweet Flowers, um, and Meadowsweet contains salicylic acid, like willow bark. So it helps with exfoliation, and it's really good in cleansing products. Then a couple other herbs I have not tried out in skincare are elderflower and turmeric. So I'm looking forward to using these in an infusion as well. Glycerol caprolate. This is from Formulator Sample Shop. And this is used in emulsions. It's used as a preservative enhancer and also helps the emulsion. And then we have this big tub of uh, this is an emulsifier. It's, it's kind of the consistency of lecithin, and it's very similar to lecithin. It's derived from sunflower seeds. The inky is glycerol citrate, lactate, linoleate, and oleate. And you only use 0.123% in a formula. It gives a very lightweight emulsion, but you can use a lot of oil in it. So it's very liquidy and lightweight, but can hold a lot of oil. I purchased this from Europe because I could not find this in the United States. So this is a new ingredient to, for me as well. And because I purchased this from Europe, I got a larger size than I would normally because I don't have to purchase from overseas very often. 
And here's a couple of hydrosols that I wanted to try out. I got these before I made the hydrosol video. These inspired me to make my own hydrosols and the reason is because I think that they use a solubilizer in their hydrosols. When I open them up, there's a little bit of foam, like a surfactant in there, and hydrosols should not contain that. Also, the, the apple hydrosol doesn't have very much of a scent at all. And these two hydrosols smell just fine, but they have the soapiness, and I'm not a big fan of that. So if I shake this, it should be just like water. There shouldn't be anything going on in here, but look at this. That is a sign that there is a, a solubilizer in there. There's nothing wrong with solubilizers, but I just might not want them in the formula I'm making. And here we have foaming apple. This is a surfactant from Formulator Sample Shop. I like this. It's a very mild surfactant. It's mild enough to use in baby formulas. I believe this is the last emulsifier I have here. This is Chromoliant SCE. This is also a liquid emulsifier. It's used a lot in cleansing oils. It's really good as a self emulsifier. So I got a really big container of this. I use it a lot in my daughter's cleansing oils. So that's why I needed so much. I go through it. And now we're going to move on to the oils. You'll see that I have a lot of plum oil from different companies. I've been looking for just the perfect plum oil. This is a plum oil from Lotion Crafter. It is cold pressed and unrefined. When plum oil is unrefined, it has just an amazing scent to it. It smells like marzipan. To me, it smells kind of like um, amaretto. It has like a, a almond type smell to it. It's a really pretty golden color. I also got plum kernel oil from New Direction Aromatics. And what I'll say about this one, this one is from Turkey, where the other ones I've gotten are from France. And the ones that are from France have just a beautiful smell to them. Whereas this tur one from Turkey, if, if maybe you're not into that strong of a smell, this one is more mild. And here we have another plum oil from Essential Wholesale and Labs. And here I have apple seed oil. It's unrefined. The one of the oils in this package, it leaked, so it kind of got on the label here. This is cold pressed apple seed oil. And it smells lightly of apples. It's really pretty. It's a really pretty scent. It's from Coco Jojo. This is also from Coco Jojo. This is papaya seed oil. This is also cold pressed. And this has a really pretty, sweet, fruity smell to it. And here is blueberry seed oil. It's unrefined, cold pressed from Coco Jojo. This, this smells almost like uh, synthetic blueberries. It's really interesting, but it's really pretty smelling too. And here's raspberry seed oil. This one also had oil spilt on it, so the labels not as nice looking. This one, unlike the other ones, doesn't have much of a smell to it. And here I have a cranberry seed oil, a virgin cranberry seed oil from J. Edwards International. They are uh, bulknaturals.com on, online was where you can purchase them. And this has a light, fruity, sweet smell to it. And this one has got to be one of my all-time favorites. This is virgin strawberry seed oil. It smells absolutely delightful. I cannot explain to you how beautiful this smells. It smells like strawberry jam, really. And some other oils I've gotten from New Direction Aromatic. I have chia seed oil, which has nice omega fatty acids in there. And I have oat seed oil, which I really love. It's really good for nourishing the skin and dealing with sensitive skins. And camellia seed oil, which is tea seed oil. And avocado oil. I live right next to the avocado capital of the world, which is Fallbrook, California. There's a few local family owned avocado farms in Fallbrook that produce their own avocado oil. So I'll probably be purchasing uh, the avocado from them in the future, but I uh, just wanted to try this one out. 
And this one's purchased from Health and Beauty Natural Oils, HBNO. This is organic golden jojoba oil. I haven't tried the jojoba oil from this brand yet, but I like using jojoba oil to infuse my herbs. It does not go rancid, and I love the way that this feels on the skin. It's so skin loving. It's just like your sebum, which is your natural oils that your skin produces. And I also have organic pumpkin seed oil here that I want to try out from the same company. And back here I have grape seed oil, unrefined. This is not as green as I've seen in other oils. So that's one of the reasons I like to try out different um, suppliers because I find out what's the best. And I think I'm gonna go back to my previous supplier that I've enjoyed. And I purchased a couple of butters from Paris Fragrances and Cosmetic Supplies. This is Mango Butter. I've worked with Mango Butter before. I've not worked with Muru Muru Butter before. This is unrefined. I've read that this butter has similar skin feel as some silicone, so if used in a small amount, this can have a nice feel on the skin. And now I have this tomato seed oil, unrefined, that I also got from HBNO. Comes in a dropper bottle, which is nice if you only use these oils in small percentages. And I've seen tomato seed oil be a lot deeper and darker than this. This is a light yellow. It does not have a, much of a scent to it either. And I've tried different oils that have a much stronger, almost sweeter smell to them and much deeper color. So that's something that I will consider in future orders for this particular oil. We have sea buckthorn seed oil. This is a super critical CO2 extract. This is the seed oil, not the fruit oil. The fruit oil has different properties than this uh, seed oil does. The seed oil is not as vibrantly orange as the fruit oil is. It does not stain the skin and you can use it in higher concentrations. And I prefer the seed oil to the fruit oil personally. And I really like this brand, Cebu. And here's a couple of CO2 extracts I purchased from the Herbery. And I have not worked with pomegranate seed CO2 extract before, but, but I have worked with Shizandra fruit CO2 extract before. Shizandra fruit CO2 extract is really great for irritated and sensitive skins. This pomegranate seed CO2 extract has some unique fatty acids in them. And now we're down to my extracts that I purchased and some actives. This is a ceramide complex. This is vegan and it's from Formulator Sample Shop. I think all the rest of these are from Formulator Sample Shop. This is a cucumber extract, so it's just cucumber and glycerin. This is something I can actually just make at home. This is papaya enzyme oil soluble. This is lupine peptides. This is hydrolyzed baobab protein. So these are baobab peptides. I also have kale protein blend. And then I have phytobiotics pumpkin seed, pumpkin enzymes. So you can kind of tell that I'm on a little pumpkin kick in this haul here. Here's willow bark extract, 20%. Dragon's blood extract and glycerin. Cranberry enzyme dragon fruit extract. This is collagen ear. This is a different lupine peptide. And here is some of the new lab equipment that I've purchased. This is a overhead mixer. I just got this off of eBay. I needed an overhead mixer that wasn't overly expensive and that's what I got. This is really going to help me a lot in a lot of my formulation. And my most exciting piece of equipment is this homogenizer. I purchased this from France. It arrived from France. And this is going to help me make some really amazing lotions and serum emulsions. So I'm really excited about this piece of equipment. So there's my haul, a huge haul. I have a lot of ingredients that I'm excited to work with, some new ingredients and some different suppliers from some of the ingredients I already love. 
I'm looking forward to seeing how these new ingredients and my old loved ingredients are going to work with the new lab equipment and take my formulations for my Rustic Ranch Remedies skincare line to a whole new level. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions. Please subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.